Hey everyone, Tom Parks here for Annex Wealth Management's What's That? What is a bond? A bond is simply a loan or an IOU. When you buy a bond, you are effectively lending your money to the US government, a company, maybe a foreign government or company, or something like that. As you may know from other videos or blogs that we've done, all investing involves risk. It's important to remember that there are different levels of risk and different types of risk when it comes to investments. So if a bond is a loan, what do you suppose is the biggest risk an investor faces? When I ask this question, most people think about the last time they lent 20 bucks to their buddy, never to see it again, and they immediately say, what if I don't get my money back, Tom? Very astute question. Credit worthiness is an issue when you're looking at so-called junk bonds or high yield bonds and the like. However, while the risk of default is real anytime a loan is made, the more prevalent risk associated with bonds is interest rate risk. I'll explain how that works in a little bit. Now that we've got a basic sense of what a bond is and some of the risks involved, let's use a ridiculous example to help grasp the concept of how the bond market basically functions. To make the explanation simple, let's pretend that you can only buy bonds in two places, the bond store, which would be the issuer of the bond, and eBay, the bond market. Keep in mind, this is for illustrative purposes only. Let's start by making sure that we're all on the same page about the important ingredients that make up a loan. Anyone who has borrowed money knows that there is the loan amount, there's always some sort of interest rate associated with the loan, and you generally have a deadline or term for paying back the loan. Fair enough? So let's say that you've decided you're ready to invest in bonds. What do you do? Well, if you remember what I said about this fictitious scenario where there are only two places in the world to engage in bond transactions, you go to the bond store or the issuer, of course. When you walk in, you find a chart showing all the bonds available with their different interest rates, terms, and all that stuff. So you tell the nice lady behind the counter that you'd like to buy or invest $1,000 in the bond. She's gonna ask you for how long you would like to lend them the money. In this case, you're looking at a 10 year horizon. She's gonna look at her chart and let's just say for the sake of this imaginary example, that a 10 year bond is paying 4%. So you hand over the $1,000 and she gives you a piece of paper that says you are owed 4% which can be paid monthly, quarterly, annually, or in a final balloon payment or whatever. And since this is a loan, they'll give your $1,000 back in 10 years. Let's assume that three years after you bought this 10-year bond that's paying 4%, you decide that you want to buy a new smartphone. So you need your $1,000 back. Naturally, you head back to the bond store and say, hey, I know I said you guys could use my money for 10 years, but I really need it back, like right now. The bond store lady is going to say, sorry, but we're not going to be able to pay you for seven more years because that was our deal. If you really need the money, why don't you go over to the only other place in the world where bonds are transacted and sell that IOU to someone else. In seven years, we'll just pay them back instead of you. So you go to eBay and you list your bond, which now has only seven years left before it's paid back, and you ask for the face amount, which is $1,000. Here's the rub. Interest rates are always fluctuating up and down. What if interest rates have gone up in the three years since you originally bought the bond and the bond store is issuing brand spanking new seven year bonds at 5% interest? Why would someone pay you $1,000 for a 4% bond when they can head over to the bond store and get one that pays 5%? You're not necessarily out of luck though. Somebody might say, hey, I only have 950 bucks. So if you're willing to sell me your bond, I'll take the 4% interest payments and then get $1,000 back in seven years. While my math is totally off in this fake example, that, in a nutshell, is interest rate risk. On the other hand, if interest rates have dropped in the last three years, you'll probably be able to ask for more than $1,000 because your 4% would be more attractive than the lower rate being offered at the time. As a purely practical matter, most people who I talk to on a daily basis are investing in bond mutual funds as opposed to transacting in individual bonds. So this imaginary scenario I just described is usually handled by the mutual fund manager and you're not likely to encounter it yourself. But I thought it might be nice to have a general idea of what a bond is and how interest rates affect bond prices over time. In conclusion, for all of my gotcha competitors and friendly compliance personnel looking to protect me from myself, let me remind everyone that this example was meant for illustration purposes only. The bond market is a lot more complicated in reality, and the math on my interest rates and prices were grossly oversimplified to make the concept easier to explain. 
That's why it's so important to work with professionals when you're investing. So for more educational content like this, subscribe to the Annex Wealth Management YouTube channel. Thanks.